I would like you to bear with me a little foolishness. Please do bear with me, for I am jealous for you with God's kind of jealousy, since I promise to present you as a pure virgin in marriage to your one husband, the Messiah. And I fear that somehow your minds may be seduced away from simple and pure devotion to the Messiah, just as Hava was deceived by the servant and his craftiness. For if someone comes and tells you about some other Yeshua than the one we told you about, or if you receive a spirit different from the one you received or accept some so-called good news different from the good news you already accepted, you bear with him well enough. For I don't consider myself in any way inferior to these super emissaries. I may not be a skilled speaker, but I do have the knowledge. Anyhow, we have made this clear to you in every way and in every circumstance. Or did I sin in humbling myself so that you could be exalted in proclaiming God's good news to you free of charge? I robbed other congregations by accepting support from them in order to serve you. And when I was with you and had needs, I did not burden anyone. <laughs> My needs were met by the brothers who came from Macedonia. In nothing have I been a burden to you, nor will I be. The truthfulness of the Messiah is in me, so that this boast concerning me is not going to be silenced anywhere in Achaia. Why won't I ever accept your support? Is it that I don't love you? God knows I do. No, I do it and will go on doing it in order to cut the ground from under those who want who want an excuse to boast that they work the same way we do. The fact is that such men are pseudo-emissaries. They tell lies about their work and masquerade as emissaries of the Messiah. There is nothing surprising in that, for the adversary himself masquerades as an angel of light. So it's no great, so it's no great thing if his workers masquerade as servants of righteousness. They will meet the end their deeds deserve. I repeat, don't let anyone think I'm a fool. But even if you do, at least receive me as a fool so that I too may do a little boasting. What I am saying is not in accordance with the Lord. Rather, this conceited boasting is spoken as a fool would speak. Since many people boast in a worldly way, I too will boast this way, for since you yourselves are so wise, you gladly put up with fools. You put up with it if someone makes slaves of you, exploits you, takes you in, puffs himself up, slaps you in the face. To my shame, I must admit that we have been too weak to do such things. But if anyone dares to boast about something, I'm talking like a fool. I am just as daring. Are they Hebrew speakers? So am I. Are they of the people of Israel? So am I. Are they descendants of Abraham? So am I. Are they servants of the Messiah? I'm talking like a madman. I'm a better one. I've worked much harder, been in prison more often, suffered more beatings, near death, been near death over and over. Five times I received 40 lashes, less one, from the Jews. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. In my many travels, I have been exposed to danger from rivers, dangers from robbers, danger from my own people, danger from Gentiles, danger in the city, danger in the desert, danger in the sea, danger from my false brothers. I have toiled and endured hardship, often not had enough sleep, been hungry and thirsty, frequently gone without food, been cold and naked, and besides these external matters, there is the daily pressure of my anxious concern for all the congregations, who is weak without my sharing his weakness, who falls into sin without my burning inside. If I must boast, I will boast about things that I show how weak I am. God the Father of the Lord Yeshua, blessed be he forever, knows that I am not lying. When I was in Delmuta, the governor under King Aratas had the city of Delamuta guarded in order to arrest me. But I was lowered in a basket through the opening of the wall and escaped his clutches. I have to boast. There is nothing to be gained by it. But I will go on 
go on to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in union with the Messiah who 14 years ago was snatched up to the third heaven. Whether he was in the body or outside the body, I don't know. God knows. And I know that such a man, whether in the body or apart from the body, I don't know. God knows who snatched into Gan Eden and heard things that cannot be put into words, things unlawful for a human being to utter. About such a man, I will boast. But about myself, I will not boast, except in regard to my weaknesses. If I did want to boast, I would not be too foolish. I would not be foolish because I would be speaking the truth. But because of the extraordinary greatness of the revelations, I refrain so that no one will think more of me than what my words or deeds may warrant. Therefore, to keep me from becoming, becoming overly proud, I was given a thorn in my flesh, a messenger from the adversary to pound away at me so that I wouldn't grow conceited. Three times I begged the Lord to take this thing away from me, but he told me, my grace is enough for you, for my power is brought to perfection and weakness. Therefore, I am very happy to boast about my weaknesses in order that the Messiah's power will rest upon me. Yes, I am well pleased with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, difficulties endured on behalf of the Messiah. For it is when I am weak that I am strong. I have behaved like a fool, but you forced me to do it. You who should have been condemning me, for I am in no way inferior to the super emissaries, even if I am nothing. The things that prove I am an emissary, signs, wonders, and miracles were done in your presence, despite what I had to endure. Is there any way in which you have been behind any other congregations other than in my not having been a burden to you? For this is unfairness. Please forgive me. Look, I am already a third time to come visit you, and I will not be a burden to you. For it is not what you own that I want, but you. Children are not surprised to save up for their parents, but parents for their children. And as for me, I am most gladly spent everything I have and spent myself to for your sakes. If I love you more, I am to be am I to be loved less? Let it be granted then. I would not be a burden to you, but crafty fellow that I am, I took you with trickery. Would it perhaps thought someone I sent you? that I took advantage of you. I urged Titus to go and send the brother with him. Titus didn't take advantage of you, did he? Didn't we like the same spirit and show you the same path? Perhaps you think that all this time we have been defending ourselves before you. No, we have been speaking in the sight of God as those united with the Messiah should. And as my dear friends, it is all for your upbuilding. For I'm afraid of coming and finding you not the way I want you to be, and also of not being found the way you want me to be. I am afraid of finding quarreling and jealousy, anger and rivalry, slander and gossip, arrogance and disorder. I am afraid that when I come again, my God may humiliate me in your presence, and that I may be grieved over many of those who sin in the past and have not repented of the impurity, fornications, debauchery that they have engaged in. This will be the third time that I have come to visit you. Any charge must be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. To those who have sinned and passed, and to the rest I say beforehand, while absent the same thing I said when I was with you the second time, if I come again, I will spare you I will spare I will not spare you, since you are looking for proof of the Messiah speaking in me, he is not weak in dealing with you, but he was powerful among you. For although he was executed on a stake in weakness, now he lives by God's power. And we are too weak in union with him, but in dealing with you, we live with him by God's power. Examine yourselves to see whether you are living the life of trust. Test yourselves. Don't you realize that the Messiah, Yeshua, is in you unless you fail to pass the test? But I hope you realize that we are not failures, and we pray to God that you will do nothing wrong. We are not concerned about our appearing successful, but with your doing what is right, even if we appear to be failures, for we cannot act against the truth, only for it. So we rejoice wherever we are weak and you are strong. Indeed, what we pray for is that you become perfect. I write these things while away from you, so that when I am with you, I will not have to use my authority to deal sharply with you. 
For the Lord gave it to me for building up and not for tearing down. And now, brothers, shalom. Put yourselves in order. Pay attention to my advice. Be of one mind. Live in shalom. And the God of love and shalom will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All God's people send greetings to you. The grace of the Lord Yeshua, the Messiah, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Ruach HaKodesh be with you all.